Here we are once more. This time we're going to see a match between Harlequin Knight and Kiancia. Andrew is again with me. Hello, everybody. Uh, as far as I can see from the match, from the tournament stand, these are uh, more low level players with Harlequin at 8 points and Kiancia at 4. So uh, we're hoping to see something else except Criminal and Wayland, but uh, half of the match is already the same. <laughs> um, this is. The second match from these players, the first one we didn't manage to catch because I was recording uh, the match between Hope and Nerticat. So we're going to see now how it's going to go. And yet again, Criminal Wayland. The uh, classic matchup of this tournament. Oh boy. And it's like, uh, I wouldn't say that they're like that much of a part, but everybody's playing them. Yeah. So we may this this may be a bit more uh, inexperienced players, but uh, if both of them are inexperienced, it can still make for an interesting game. Because uh, unlike the first round, the first round of the tournament, you don't get very good players playing with very bad players. Andrew, I found you very silent today. Yeah, no, Mom, I'm, I'm trying to look at the cards now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hearing German from your television, and I'm trying to. <laughs> it's it it's not my television, it's actually my wife. <laughs> so, well, not a bad start for the Wayland, protection for everything, plus some good economy. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I think it's a pretty decent hand for the Wayland. Yeah, he just drew more ice, so... You can protect everything and then play the big guys. Start uh, advancing that agenda behind him and be a prince. Yeah, good, a good, a good starting hand. Yeah. Oh, don't even think that hits front. He just won't play it. Thinking. There we go. Unfortunately, he does have the stick to beta, so he's probably going to get in immediately. And he has, he yeah, he has one in three chance to uh, hit that agenda. Even if he hits it, it's not huge. So no, it's not like the previous game with the poor. Poor Nerdicat who had two agendas in his uh, starting hand. What do you yeah, think? If you, you ag against against criminal, when you have like two agendas in your hand, would you go HQ archives or HQ R&D? If you could dress both eyes. I usually like my standard one is HQ R&D. But let's say you have. I'm really paranoid. Maybe I'd go archives. Let's say. Even with two agendas in your hand? Yeah, it does mean you're thinking he has a sneak dot beta. He doesn't always have it in his starting hand. Yeah, it's yeah. But isn't it better to make sure that you're protected rather than uh, uh, eat it in the face? Yeah, but it's always unpleasant when he when uh, the runner gets to see your cards every time from the beginning. Mm. So it's like he has so much control just knowing what comes out of your hand every turn. It's yeah. scary. But still, it's the the fact that um, the runner then uh, knows uh, if he hits it, it's one side, you use two agendas in your starting hand, and the other he just sees what's coming. I see. I think the the first one is much less scary than the second one. Sorry, the losing the agendas is much more dangerous than uh, allowing him to see what's coming. Yeah, hard to see. Again, it's hard because he might run on them anyway, he might run on your HQ or archives anyway, and if it's something he can go past, uh, get past, if he has like a special order, yeah, that still doesn't really save you. But then again, that doesn't save you, save you on R&B either, but it's like, it's really yeah, hard to call it. You can actually make him pay for the R&D access uh, instead of letting him through, yeah, I see what you mean. 
it's it, it's a very hard call. That, yeah. that is definitely true. Yeah. So let's see how he's going to play it. Is he going to uh, play that header in some archives, or does he try to score that the hostile takeover before it's too late? No, he's going to play it and maybe play the agenda with it. Yeah, it's a project atlas now. Oh, he's go she's going to score it. Oh, he got a hostile takeover now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's playing it, make sure he can raise the archer later. Yeah, probably not a bad move. No. He could use the money. He's, and the he's also giving the signal to the runner that he probably doesn't have another agenda. Yeah. The runner is still going to get uh, to run uh, his HQ every turn because that's you know free to two free money, so why not? Let's see how long it takes for him to hit that agenda. Nope, again. You see, some people have other luck. When when I uh, when the runners uh, hit my HQ, they hit one in four. When one in four is an agenda, they hit it, and almost always when I'm about to win the game. When uh, I've noticed. <laughs> when when they run uh, random players, they hit the same card over and over again. It's just not fair, I tell you. Luck favors the bold. Just today, yeah, I was uh, I managed to salvage a game that was just he just slaughtered me from the start, and I managed to make it so that I could win one turn later. I had four cards in my hand with one agenda and an impervious fort with an agenda ready to be scored. He runs, hits the only agenda he needed. I was like, this is not even fair anymore. And the, this game is not, the, the game does suffer a lot from the lack of the draw. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, well, I mean, you have, you have ways to minimize the lack of the draw, but then you, uh, uh, you, you, you sacrifice other things. You can only do as much. In this case now he would probably have to draw another card. No, he goes for the advance. So he basically guarantees he's going to lose that agenda. Ah, he realized it. I don't know. Drawing another what if he draws another agenda? Well, I think three agendas four agendas are so early in the game it's a very low chance. Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, he managed to pull off the matrix analyzer. He still might lose that priority requisition, but uh, still better than losing uh, for sure. No, no, it would also be an option to play that priority requisition on the server, but uh, it's unlikely that he would be able to raise that uh, that wall for free. Yeah, that's what I'm. That, that, that's what I'm analyzing right now. But yeah, he Yeah, the runner will probably run. Mm -hmm. And uh, if he runs, he gets an inside job, even better. I also see that the runner is very, very conservative. It, he seems he doesn't run unless he has the icebreaker. So he still doesn't know what any of these eyes are. So he could have run much earlier. And maybe he just wants to see a lot of the stuff in an NHQ and not sacrifice like his draw. He wants to get some stuff out. Mm. Let's see what he draws now, because this will be important. Again, <laughs> that Kaguya. Oh. Kansia has all the luck. So we have here bank jobs, an E3, an infiltration. I wonder why he doesn't infiltrate it. To see what it is. He's going to filter the ice. No, that's a sign of a very, very uh, protective runner, you know? Then they, yeah. when you actually look at the ice instead of looking at the. instead of just eating it with your face. Uh, I never. I almost never do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I did it when I was playing in the beginning, but now yeah. I almost never infiltrate ice. Yeah. There's, no, there's almost no point in it. If you're going to do that, play uh, play uh, the uh, new card that comes out. The uh, what's yeah, it? Snitch. 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 I actually snitch. saw my first. I saw my first player playing with snitch today. And how did it go? Uh, I think I lost the game, but it was the one one of those that I lost for one turn. 
didn't help him that much, I think. He, I think he saw an archer at some point, but that's about it. I, I think, like, Snitch is, is, is like, a mental comfort, too. Really. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it helps runners that are, like, scared to run, to yeah. run more often. And yeah. that, that, that's its real value. <laughs> it helps yeah. you get past... I think... Uh, it, the same thing... Uh, psychiatrist will do to you yeah, exactly i think it's uh, the kind of thing that uh, it's psychological you know that uh, you want to do it uh, when um, you know that you are playing very protectively very uh, very safely so you want to put that snitch in your game to allow you to play more aggressively yeah you want to overcome your fears using that one it's like oh but i do have this backup so i'm gonna snitch and if it's bad yeah it's a uh, it's it's a very aggravated way of paranoia, and uh, you're a bit of a control freak, yeah. I think. So, now, now that was a mistake. When he saw that Hadrian, he should have run at Remo, you know? He would have caused him, it would have made him raise that Hadrian's, and then he would uh, have been at a better point to run at his remotes. But, you know, that's that's a problem. When you let the the, uh, the corporation just do nothing with the remotes, when you don't, don't even need to... Uh, raise your eyes you have so much money you can score your agendas without problem yeah now he has like all three icebreakers but the problem is we, we see we're seeing an archer yeah and you're seeing a super fort starting to for uh, to show up and if he drops that uh, right position there and that archer he's in a good position yeah if he if they if they run if they run it doesn't hit that priority requisition from the run his hand it's uh, going to be brutal He's going to yeah, raise that no, Hadrian's no, for free. When, when he really wants to I, hit that He really wants to hit that priority requisition now. Let's see. Bam! Stay to the other. Now yeah. he knows at least what's coming. Like I said, luck favors the bold. You have to run like a maniac, like I yeah. do. And that's the thing. I mean, if he managed to, if he had run that remote and managed to make him raise that Hadrian's, that priority requisition wouldn't have been so painful. Now that priority goes, he's going to, to be devastating. He's going to raise that Hadrian's, and then he can just score any agenda he wants. I think he'll raise, uh, him, he maybe raise that archer, I don't know, it depends. He's going to raise that, he's going to play the archer in front of the Hadrian's, yeah. and then uh, the runner is just going to not get in anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what do you raise, like, let's say that the runner does not run anything, and both Hadrian's wall and the archer are there. Which one do you raise with priority requisition? Uh, because right now the archer might not be that expensive because it doesn't lose you the agenda, but actually archer archer is archer is more expensive than uh, Hadrian's. Hadrian's cost the runner seven to break. Archer cost the runner ten to break. Yeah, no, no, no but I'm saying like, uh, which one do you do for free? Hadrian. If if I could, I would get the, the archer, yeah, to keep the agenda points. But um, you don't want to do the. Uh, uh, if you, I'm not sure. I think I think I would raise the Adrian's wall because that costs you ten as a corp. Yeah, and he doesn't have that much money now. The archer costs him four. He does have to lose the agenda, but he'll probably get. Um, he might get another two point or even a three point or so. It doesn't matter if you want. That's what I say. I would raise the. Uh, I, would, I would priority requisition the. Uh, Adrian's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in this case, the way it's set up, it makes sense that he would priority acquisition the Hadrian's because he would use Rarter to uh, stop the run because it costs more to break. Yeah, yeah. So that Aurora now is just ouch. Four to break uh, through the R&D run. That is such a bad card. And I'm, I, I like some of the artwork on these cards, but like for a card named Aurora, the art isn't much. For the Aurora is decent, is decent against Hadrian's. Against everybody else, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm saying like, it's a bad card, and it doesn't even look that awesome, unfortunately. If the <laughs> isn't, it, nice, right? isn't it better that it doesn't look awesome? I mean, if it was an awesome card that you never put it in your deck, it would have been the same, wouldn't it? Yeah, but now people still do it. I don't know why. I. I've used Aurora once or twice, I think. I've, I've, using, I've using it in my uh, research runner Gabriel deck, where I uh, have it um, so that uh, I can run mediums. Oh, he's going with the Archer on the thing? Or is he... No, 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 Matrix Analyzer. Ah, the Matrix Analyzer, all right. Now he has to play that priority requisition. This makes no sense. 
he has no money to get out through that and you don't want him to randomly steal your priority requisition. I actually don't know what the previous game was like, so maybe he doesn't care if he gets the points. Yeah. Maybe he won with maybe a lot of... Uh, yeah, uh, he has the Enigma there, so he's not getting through anyway. He might just take the credits or something. No, but... Uh, no, come on, why do you put two, pri two Matrix Analyzer without something to advance? Ah, oh, he has the Hadrian, the wall to advance, okay. But still. Yeah, a bit of a waste in my mind. Yeah, he should have gone for the agenda right now. That's just free money. at least have taken the credit. Yeah, the, what, what, what are you thinking about? He just drew that trick of light. He's thinking about, okay, here was my and the advance my ice wall again. And maybe gonna, maybe, uh, he, maybe he wants to... to what, what I'm suspecting he wants to do is uh, advance that ice wall and then be able to play the archer and score the priority requisition in one turn somehow. Yeah, he won't be able to do it in one no, turn. Unless he gets another trick of light. Yeah, and a lot of advancements. Yeah, it's hard. It's not worth it. Right, the advancements I think he can get from the matrix analyzers. But I suspect uh, that... Uh, he, the runner is probably going to hit that priority requisition. Yeah, I don't like this deck very much. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, Harlequin Light. It has both Pe Peacock and Guardian Blade. It really doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe he was out of influence. He was what? Maybe he was out of influence. And Peacock is not that yes. bad, yeah? So, I mean, if you have E3, yeah, it's decent. He just took one Golden Blade? Maybe. Yes. To have a to have an option. Yeah. I think I'm looking at the deck right now. I think uh, Harlequin Light's deck is... I'm seeing 49 cards in his deck right now. Okay. He has, six, he has five in his hand, three installed, and one in his archives. He's running a huge deck. Okay. He's yeah. running... He's running a 55 yeah. or something. No, more. 60 cars or so. I don't think it's 60, but no, it's, it's not 60. So. 60. Yeah, yeah, it's 3 plus 5, 8 plus 1, 6, 8, 8, 9. That is 50, uh, for, uh, 58. I don't know what his local meta is. Maybe he's just uh, full of uh, Jinteki. Who knows? And the court deck is 45 cards. Mm. Well, both players did tell me that the death suck. So they did admit it. So maybe they realized they didn't make a very... Uh, they had a, a, an option, a bad option there. I'm not sure why he didn't raise that, uh, that ice. He's just giving him free credits now. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's like, the game so far wasn't that bad, but the decks are quite puzzling. <laughs> well, you, we were all newbies at the game at one point or another, so... You don't they always don't build the perfect really decks. Bad, so hey? They don't play really bad. I think, I think I learned that you need small decks for the corp and the runner before... I mean, big corps for the deck and uh, big uh, decks for the corp in this case, because yeah. this is running 45 and smaller for the runner. Yeah. Really early on, before I started playing well. Well, were you playing other card games before? Yeah. When you play other card games, oh. you usually know this stuff. I really don't understand why he's still he's so delaying with that priority requisition. What's he waiting for? Well, right now he can't raise it. He can't rest the Aidmans. He can't rest the Archer if he puts it down. Exactly, and the Archer is enough. The, uh, he was enough, not anymore. There we go. Now he's, be a, he, he's trying to be able to rest at Hadrian's. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's not fair if both players do uh, moves we don't understand, but matter when both of them have them do it. Uh, play weirdly, then at least the game is more equal. Yeah, and it, at least it's not, you don't see all the moves you've seen before. It's not like, okay, this happens and this happens. They, they puzzle you. <laughs> 
On the other hand, it's at least not as bad as the pro players who managed to win each game in 10 rounds or something. Boys, those... We had a lot of bad luck with the previous game. I mean, uh, the, the, the core players always had bad luck before. Yeah. Yeah, an avalanche. Yeah. So, he's out of memory now, but he's probably going to start running those archives. I think he's gonna run HQ, I mean, there's no problem. Uh, sorry, I meant the HQ. But you see that the... Um, how both players play, yeah? You, the, the, the runner puts all his uh, icebreakers first, and then runs, and the corp really plays super safely. Even though he can definitely stop running, stop one run in the uh, in the remote server, he's still keeping that agenda in his hand, risking quite a lot. Yeah, we'll see. Also playing a bit slow. They're not yeah, the, the they're, they're not like the super fast hob who knows the plugin by heart. Yeah, slow and steady. <laughs> I suspect maybe he's. Just maybe, we're gonna, maybe we're gonna see that private acquisition go down now. Yeah. Yeah. Private acquisition and then take a credit. I suspect it's going to happen. Or priority acquisition, Archer and take a. No, he can't play both, so I, I assume he won't play both. He might play the Archer and the private acquisition. Let's see. Yeah, Archer is down. The, uh, I have no idea. The, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> could not say why that happened. <laughs> See, that's why I say it gets interesting. You think you know what they're gonna do, and they do something else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that if that sneak toe wasn't there, I would say okay, that's you know. He really wants to read out the runner through that matrix analyzer. He has maybe, big maybe. plans for that trick of light. <laughs> Yep, I think you got it. I think that's the reason. That trick of light, that uh, matrix analyzer isn't there for without a purpose. Yeah, you see, he just advanced that ice wall. It's like, this is the advancement there. God damn it, he's been waiting for that trick of light so long. Oh boy. <laughs> And again, we're not trying to pick on the players or anything. They're, no. We've definitely seen worse players, and they're quite decent. But they also, the biggest problem is they play very slowly, and they're very paranoid. Yeah, very conservatively. And it, it, I actually think that this is a game in which does, this does not pay that much. No. Well, it does make sense that uh, uh, at the bottom of the of the tournament, they have... No, it's not the same to, be, uh, to have a lot to learn as a player. So... Is a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. And the, I actually think what people the, like, what these players should do is like check out some videos online and see how like the big players do it. Yeah. And then they'll see it's like not like oh I've been so stupid. You see why they do it. Stuff connects and it really helps. Uh, yeah. You up your we, we can always yeah, hope. You can just watch them. They're they're fun to watch. We can always hope that uh, they will see this video once uh, the tournament is finished and they see when they could have played better, or they see some people like us commenting on some of these actions, and they realize when they could have played uh, some few be things better. Yeah, again, it's really easy for us because we're seeing all the cards, we know what's going on. Yeah, so. yeah. So I'm but suspecting still, he's... I mean, still, some moves are quite weird. He's going to advance that once now, that's my suspicion. Yeah, he most definitely will. He has Which enough. Is it is. Actually, if he advances it once, 
Now, well, yeah, yeah. yeah he can he can trick off light and he can advance it in a turn. Uh, Only problem is if, if the runner is gonna run. If the runner runs that server and uh, he thinks he can protect himself with the Hadrians, he's going to be mistaken because Aurora can break Hadrians in uh, six credits. Yeah, no, no, actually, I think he's pretty, I seven, think he eight credits. credits. I think he knows he has to rest dodge. That's yeah, I'm pretty sure on that. But on the other hand, if uh, Kalequinite plays that ninja and gets a uh, few credits before he runs, he can break the archer too. I doubt that's gonna happen, honestly. What? Well, 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 well he, I think he's gonna do it, yeah, he put the... Let's he, see. All he, needs to do is, he needs to take two credits and run. Yeah. yeah. So now it's too late, you know? You should have, he should have played that... Uh, uh, he should have played that uh, priority requisition earlier than this, much earlier. Yes, he, he didn't wait quite a lot. So now he can break through that archer and uh, get in easily. Yeah, it, 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 it is still worth it to raise that... Uh... That archer. Yeah, that's going ten to take is, ten. Ten credits is decent. Yeah, it's it's a hefty price. Well, he can also raise the Hadrians, which is eight credits instead, and make sure that that archer stays to threaten. But I'm suspecting he go for the archer. Problem is that um, if he leaves the archer to threaten, he can't uh, raise the other archer. Well, he can, but he has to waste all his agendas. Yeah. yeah. No, well, we'll see. I I think I'd raise Archer. Mm. Well, like you said, eight six not that big of a difference. Yeah, hard to go. Whatever he raises, it's it, it's good as long as he raises something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. In he's not going to raise anything. That's the yeah, worst thing you can do. Yeah, make him pay. Make him pay. Then he's just going to run again next time. Yeah. A three point agenda, just like that, when you could have made him pay eight credits. At least. Yeah, and he would have paid seven. Because the problem is, if he's not going to pay these credits now, he's going to have them to pay them next time. Yeah, definitely. It does nothing good for the court. Yeah. It was, it was perfect for the runner. Unless you play something like NBN, where you say, okay, I can wipe their credits. Yeah, no, definitely. This, this uh, makes no sense to just let them in. Make them pay. Yeah, but that, that, that's a whole different story. Yeah. Oh, ouch. One of those arts is going to be FAO'd now. For the Adrians, well, we'll see. He, he will FAO something, because he just noticed that the court does not want to do it. Might as well force them if they don't want to. Yeah. And then it would be even worse, yeah, because... Imagine if he actually raises that uh, archer now with an FAO. It's just so much shooting his own foot. Yeah. Now he just got a Project Atlas. Yeah, if he had, the, if he had raised that archer... He would be able to score that Atlas. Now he can just run the, the server again. No, no, no. He can. Uh, he's gonna score it. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I was He doesn't wanna leave it. He's just gonna score. Correct. Probably correct. a good move. Problem is now that force activation order is going to hurt a lot more. Yeah. If he if he hits the Hadrians. If he targets the Hadrians. He's just gonna take it up. Yeah. But I said I don't know how the last game was. So uh, it may be that uh, the other player won with four points. So now he's winning the match. Yeah, possible. Possible. Let's see what he FAOs. Yeah, the ratio of programs installed to Ice rest shows you how aggressive a runner is. Mm. And right now it's uh, it's over one, which is not good. <laughs> I 
I mean, he's doing okay. When, if he manages to get another Project Atlas and uh, another Trick of Light, he can actually just win the game out of hand. Yeah, he needs to do some advance on your foot, but yeah, afterwards he can do it out of hand. And plus, he might be able to get that three-point agenda in time. Ah, it, it, it's, it's not over for him, definitely not. But no, he put himself in a bad position. He just did it to himself. Very much. He could have wasted 10 credits from the runner. He could have easily gotten that... Uh, if he had actually wasted 10 credits from the runner, now he would be able to play that Atlas, advance it once, and next turn, you know, get an extra advance from it and find his next Project Atlas. Yeah, yeah. But well, Project Atlas is alone won't help you because I think he's going to have to go for that uh, Archer at one point, so... He... Uh, I'm guessing he might need three points to hmm. win this. Oh, he's going to run that HQ. Let's see if he's going to raise that Archer finally. If he doesn't raise now, I'm, I'm, I'm flipping the table. <laughs> He might not do it because he doesn't have anything useful in his hand, but come on, he pays 10. Ugh. He's really, I think he's going for the fast advance. I can't, I can't explain it any other way. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's hoping he's hoping exactly what you just said. Get a, like, a trick of light and Atlas and get yeah. it over with. Yeah. But really, that Archer on the first server should have been raised. Absolutely. Now the runner is making one credit per run, so it's not even hurting him. Yeah. The only, uh, the only uh, runner where you don't want to always raise your eyes, even if you're just going to make them spend money, is noise. Because that's the only runner where your eyes might actually only function once. But against every other runner, you really want to make them to raise their eyes f soon and make them run their eyes again and again. Yeah. But even with noise, I mean, if it's something like an archer, you will get a parasite on it, but waste some credits. You can cleanse some virus counters at one point. It, yeah, it, it complicates things. A, a good it's noise, a good noise can eat can eat an artery. Yeah? I mean, uh, uh, they can easily fill up their uh, their uh, data feed the data suckers and then just trash your uh, artery. It, yeah. it, it's really horrible when it happens. Yeah, I had the noise that managed to kill my artery as soon as I raised it with a parasite from uh, uh, parasite from the uh, workshop plus worm. Yeah. And it was like, ah, oh, that was such a waste. No, it's like noise in full swing is pretty hard to beat, just like yeah. chaos theory. Yeah. It's the funny thing, yeah? noise in full swing and chaos theory in full swing are nightmares, yeah. But uh, the, uh, the, the one you don't want to see in the early game is Gabriel. Gabriel in the, end, in the early game can make your life hell. What what just happened? He actually forced activation door the R D. Did he? Did yeah. he have it selected or something? Uh -huh. Yeah no he way. yeah yeah. He targeted the R D played for activation door. No way. I, I thought he did it by mistake, the other guy did it by mistake. No. Why? He wants to run R D I guess. You know he has two pieces of ice he didn't want to rest last time on that server. Even where it hurts, <laughs> he knows three pieces of ice that the corp refused to res willingly. Yeah. The one on HQ and the two on the remote server. He knows that the corp did not do, in do it willingly. Why not force him? Yeah. Because he wants to play safe. Because he wants to know what he's running into. He doesn't want to uh, just run the server uh, and need a uh, random... Uh, Randomize in the face, but then again, he did it on the other three. Why not do it on R and D? I have no idea. Uh, I think uh, it's like since he's running a seven billion card deck, we can just put three snitches in. You can, you should just let him. He doesn't have snitches because it's, uh, it's Cyber Exodus. Yeah, no, I said like break the tournament rules. Let him have three snitches. <laughs> it's, it's an experiment. Let's see what happens.
I'm uh, pretty sorry. Place. He's going to play those to get those niches as far as possible. Okay, memory. Such a bad move with the first assassination orders. That would have been so great. He would have. Even that Hadrian's now would have allowed him to score that agenda. I really don't know what he's looking at. I'm pretty sure he's looking for the second trick of light now. There we go. Yeah. And he got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he likes that he likes that trick of light trick. Yeah. He's just looking for the last agenda afterwards. So he's 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 really playing conservatively. Yeah, but it doesn't it, I don't think it pays. No. No 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 way. He could have actually won the game by now. And against the proper aggressive player, he would have been hurting so bad. Yeah. But, you know, it's an equal match, so they both do some mistakes that uh, most advanced players wouldn't do. So it balances out in the end. Yeah, and like I said, it's uh, we're riddled we put with puzzles we don't normally see, so that's something. Yeah. Let's see if we're going to see that final archer. I doubt, though. Ever was an archer. Ever. Why does he even bother playing them, then? Oh, yeah. Yep. You're showcasing your new technology. I, I didn't put it for nothing. Also, I want the game to go faster. Yeah, and they're pretty cool buttons. It's like yeah, they they pay off. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to them, to 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 remember to actually use them. As far as I see, the job job game didn't reappear. So. Okay. Let's see if he Somebody sits. else is playing along. Maybe they finish really quick too. Maybe maybe. Maybe all the the, yeah. the good players finish in a uh, few turns. <laughs> can you see? Uh, uh, can you see like the list of games played? No, no. I've asked for that functionality, but not yet. You see, this is totally unfair, yeah. When the runners run me, they hit half the time. They hit agendas. When they run random players, they never hit the agenda. Yeah, but you keep forgetting that when I play you, I have like my three lucky rabbit feet around my neck, and I'm like. <laughs> Crystal ball and stuff like that. Was it against you that I, one time I ran three times with um, with a nerve agent, so six cards from HQ, and didn't see the one agenda that would have won me the game? Yeah, against me, yeah. I was like, you mother... Son of a bitch! It pays to be lucky, man. <laughs> It's like when you when you create your character in an RPG, <laughs> put some points in that luck stat. It pays yeah, off. it pays off. It does. Directly, it's not like you can use more spells or more static. No, but it, it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm I'm kidding. I mean, but I do like taking that risk. Even as a corp, I like taking some risks, and I acknowledge them. And it's like, yeah, I lost a lot of the games in the exact opposite situation. I lost when like I had the one agenda, and they just stole it from me. Yeah. My fault for letting them some luck there. It happens. It's, it's the luck of the game. That's yeah. why the game is interesting. Yeah. If it be just not but it, it does it does point, for example, how it happens where I can hit six cards in a four card HQ and not see one agenda. Another player can hit one card in five cards and hit my only agenda. Yeah, it keeps stuff interesting. <laughs> keeps me from just dominating this game. That's the reason. Game just <laughs> wants to give other players a chance. <laughs> exactly. The world champion of The game has a random element. <laughs> it knows its creator. That's that's the uh, internal uh, uh, countermeasures I put in the code so that people can actually have a chance. No, no, it's rebelling against you. Your own creation is fighting back. <laughs> it's not a bioroid, man. You didn't make it a bioroid. It turned itself into a bioroid. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
haven't seen any economy from the corp. None. I've seen only the you actions. Economy. You have tricks of light. <laughs> Whoa, here's the shipment from Kaguya. Boys in Kaguya have been working overtime for this guy. But whenever I see a criminal like that, whenever I see a criminal that doesn't run, I say, play Kate. Just don't play criminal. There's no point. Yeah, true. Play Shaper. Play Shaper. Play Shaper, put inside jobs, put Steam Hacks, you're good to go. Yeah. So I'm seeing two Auroras and one Crowder. Now something's wrong with this deck. If, you're not, if you don't have influence like enough, play one Crowder and one Aurora and special job. Yeah. yeah. Special order, sorry, not special job. <laughs> well, weird. well, in a 58 card deck, no, why not? <laughs> 58 card deck, you can play whatever you like. <laughs> Put all the cards in. Yeah, maybe the guy, the guy just didn't know what to, to, to take out. You know, everything's good. He's emotionally attached to a lot of the cards. <laughs> And I feel that way sometimes myself, you know, we have made a lot of, oh, there goes the agenda, he was preparing for it so long. Uh, I, I don't think he cares that much, I think he wants another Atlas or something that he can just trick of light. I think he cared because then he could just uh, score the hostile takeover as soon as he came. But, at least that... Uh, Runner managed to get something from R and D from HQ, HQ finally. His persistence paid off. At this point, you know, I would actually discard that compromise employee when the corporation doesn't actually raise anything. Yeah, it's, uh, th th that yeah, that was his entire plan. Not to run on stuff because he doesn't have the compromise employee. Now he'll just run everything. <laughs> We have a runner that won't run against a corporation who won't raise. Oh, there it is, there it is. Game over. Now he just has to protect HQ one turn. I suspect he's going to play that Caduceus on HQ now. No, no, no. He won't play anything. He'll just trash a card. He'll get a one credit and trash a card. No, no, look. He can play that Caduceus on HQ because he still has the credit. He still has the credits, as I was saying, to... Uh, to, to raise it and score the Atlas next turn. He's taking the credit. <laughs> uh, you, you, I told you what he's gonna do. You can explain what the right move is in a thousand ways. I I, I got his psyche. I know how he wants to play. I told you what he was going to do. <sighs> okay, let's see how this goes. His, his dream deck is 10 tricks of light. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't, don't, don't be like that. I really hope he doesn't steal it. Th this game does not need to get any longer. <laughs> Look, just have to see the game after the... Uh, uh, in the video. I have to learn, for example, that the Caduceus at this point would actually make sense. It pays for itself for one thing. It pays for itself, and then you stop the runner from running your HQ. And it's over. He didn't get it. Oh, maybe he will run again! Ah! I, I doubt it. Yeah, me too. May, uh, you know what? Maybe he's afraid that the first card is a Bioroid. That's why he runs it only on his first action. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> But, when they see in the, this video later on, they will realize, for example, that if he had actually raised that archer, that runner would have been 10 credits poorer, and he would have been able to score that uh, uh, posted bounty with no problems. So, you wouldn't have actually lost anything. Yeah? And the, probably the priority requisition as well. But even if you lost the priority requisition... 
really, runners should really go for 45 cards and corpse should go for 49. Really. There, there's like, if you're really attached to some card and you play runner, okay, 46 or 47 for whatever. If you're really attached to them, especially in the beginning, mm -hmm. you have to drop them later, but as a slow progress. But really, 58 cards, what is this? <laughs> Everything in the kitchen sink. Including the, the bathroom, because you can see it in the inside job. <laughs> he's not going to play those, he's just going to trash them now. He's going to keep the E3 implants. <laughs> you never know when a pyroid pops up behind you and you want two. Oh boy. Come on, don't be nasty. Let them play. He, he trusts the E3s. Yeah. He realizes he does, there's no pyroids in this game. We Actually, the one E3 you could keep. No, makes your Aurora yeah, cheaper. Yeah, yeah but... Pff. Still, so, so he drew so many cards, and why? What? Yeah, I really don't explain like how, how they're trying to do this. Well, this game is over. Yeah. Yeah, I, they're not again. They're not the worst players, but they really need to like, have a look. See, see. They really need to be. The runner needs to be much more brave with his runs. The corporation needs to be to be less. Protective of his agendas. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ah, uh, yeah. I I finally got by the corp deck was forty five cards. Why? Bigger chance of drawing that trick of flight. True. Because his entire strategy is wrapped around that triple flight pattern. Does he have um, archive memories at least? No, I think I just saw an aggressive secretary. Okay. He didn't have an aggressive secretary. Maybe, maybe he needs to put the archive memories instead if he loves the click of light so much. <laughs> yeah, okay, so overall, Kasanya won. Yeah. Because the first one ended 7 5, this one ended 7 4.